And good Saturday afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the Marketing Corner. I'm your host, Sean Campbell. We have a very special show today because the original guest, I said no to him, Jamar. (laughs) (laughs) I got a co-host today of a good buddy of mine, Jamar Jordan. Good morning, man. How you doing today? I'm doing good. Yeah? Were you looking forward to this? Were you kind of like, did you wake up with a little pep in your step? Always. Always. <laughs> <laughs> so, More coffee. Yeah. Quick quick, uh, <laughs> quick story. Um, we did have a special guest, but he was so wishy-washy throughout the week. He committed Tuesday, and then before we left our meeting on Tuesday, he's like, let's, let's confirm on Friday. I'm like, dude, this is the confirmation. You're going to be there Saturday, right? So I did confirm with him yesterday. <laughs> At 5.32 in the morning, he texts me back. Okay, dude, I'm. You know, let's do it. And I'm like, nah, no, no, no. It's an obligation to this audience that, you know, I, I'm committed to bringing people who want to be here to share their story, period, right? right? I have, we have people, Jamar, that are messaging me on a weekly basis, can I be on your show? Right. So there is a list accumulating in the next few months. We're a few <laughs> months out. So if you don't want to be here, dude, we got. I owe that to our audience. I agree. Uh, yeah. So, hey, Jamar Jordan and I, we we go back a few years. We hung out and met at the Sands Club, and it's an instant click. You know, when, once you and I, you know, we, we no shortage of you and I talking. You know, we we've talked business, we've talked you know sports, we we talk a lot of good stuff, right? But today, obviously, we're gonna you know bring our audience the best in what we know. So, Jamar, I want you to tell the audience a little bit about your background Mm -hmm. and what you do today. Uh, A little bit about my background. I'm originally from Dallas, Texas. Yes, I'm a Cowboys fan. The big D. (laughs) Uh, No judging. All right. Uh, I did 20-plus years in the military. I Mm -hmm. retired here uh, in Tucson out of Davis Mothin. Uh, I stayed here. funny you asked that question because what what started my financial ver mm-hmm. my financial journey was really reading the book rich dad poor dad mm-hmm. and so after that that really just changed my whole perspective about life and finances and now 20 plus years later i'm doing taxes and finances and so uh happy to be here on the radio and you bring a lot of that military background and what you do you know, there's been a few times, you know, sitting in the stands club, maybe over a cocktail or two, <laughs> where you and I start talking about um, organization and leadership. Absolutely. I mean, how much is that is intertwined in what you do for yourself and for your clients? But, you know, it, it's funny because a lot of people don't, when you first come in the military and, you know, they're drilling you and telling you systems and processes, mm-hmm. work as a team. Mm-hmm. I'm a firm believer of teamwork makes a dream work. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I hold true to that to this day, even after being retired, I still use those same principles, same philosophies that uh, the military taught me and it's helped me a lot because I don't know if you can, one of my favorite terms is called synergy. Mm-hmm. And so to me, if you can work as a team, that's what brings that synergy. And I always want to be part of a team, some greater than myself. Yeah. Yeah. I think you and I have talked, you know, uh, about other unnamed organizations <laughs> and I think you and I agree and I forgot the phrase that you use it's not the people mm-hmm. that are out of place it's the lack of processes this is right yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so I mean with the military I mean mm-hmm. can, can you speak a little bit about what you've experienced in your 20 years with the Air Force correct correct and um, you, you know what you see how maybe small businesses could use some of that attention to organization and, and processes? Oh, absolutely. I, one, one of my favorite things I tell my clients is that I use the credit of the grave process. It starts with mm-hmm. the paperwork and ends with the paperwork. Mm-hmm. Meaning that, you know, you have to have a beginning, there's a middle, and there's an end. The end is usually the wrap-up, which is the most important because if you don't wrap it up, it just continues to go. Mm-hmm. So, um, just over the years, I really start to expand on that and really hone in on my clients like, look, you need to do your credit or grave process because usually that's where you're able to catch some of the steps that they missed. Mm-hmm. Why do small businesses overlook processes? I, 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 would, I have no statistical data in front of me, but I would guess 90 to 95% of small businesses lack processes in place. 
Well, well, part of it is that, you know, now, you know, the good thing about America, it tells you anybody can have a business, mm -hmm. but it doesn't necessarily educate you how to run a business. Exactly. So I yeah. think that now a lot of people are just, you know, are just, you know, throwing darts against the wall and see what sticks or they're listening mm -hmm. to somebody mm -hmm. who may have done the work uh, on social media or they've taken classes or they've taken gotten certifications mm -hmm. and they're thinking that they're thinking that they can really duplicate the people but a lot of times the people that are saying that have taken extensive education and they're just trying to make it seem like it's a lot easier to get started mm -hmm. in order to sell you a course yeah another thing is like um, I think sometimes leadership in these small businesses they're not very good trainers I'm sorry, but they don't know how to train people that maybe don't have any or very little experience with what they do, mm -hmm. the proper way to train somebody. They literally just put them at a station or put them in front of a computer and say, go at it. We <laughs> wish you luck. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny, you know, going back to the military, I'm really happy that I got to go through that extensive training. Right. Right. You know, we complain about a lot of things earlier in our life, and then we come back and, and use those same mm -hmm. uh process systems and processes now as we go on through our later life mm -hmm. and say man i'm glad i really learned that because that really helps me out right. not only in business but just life in general yeah i think similar to me you know i i started off in small business you know i helped a lot of local small business in particular in the automotive industry and then when the recession hit in the early 2000s i had to like i say this jokingly like get a real job i worked for citibank Okay. And I don't think without those seven and a half years, as much as I hated it at Citibank, it taught me a lot about systems and processes. And it put me, gave me the ability to sit in front of, at a desktop for hours at a time and get work done. Whereas before, I didn't have that discipline at all. Mm -hmm. And it taught me a lot about leadership. They actually had tremendous training programs. So when I got back in a small business, it was a, a clearly a, a, a huge void. I should say, because when you start at a corporation like a city bank or at the military, oh, absolutely, there is a training manual, there is an HR, you know, department, there is a, you know, trainings that you got to go through methodically to build you up mm -hmm. to your discipline. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I totally agree with that. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, like you say, you know, you have to. I tell people, people have to understand how corporate America works. You don't necessarily mm -hmm. have to be like corporate America. Right. Right. But America is ran like that. So if you have a better understanding, you, know, you take that and you learn a little bit about, you know, the methodology. The methodologies are the same. Mm -hmm. It's just the techniques. We've got social media now. Mm -hmm. We've got the Internet. Those things would have evolved, but the methodologies and still yeah. come down to yeah. uh, sales operations and finances. If you go back and you look, that's at the core. And now you have the marketing piece, which is huge because mm -hmm. now it's going from marketing. Now everybody wants to be their own brand. Mm -hmm. Another thing we have is AI. Oh, you know, yes. If you don't have a training manual or human resources manual in place, mm -hmm. there's this little thing called ChatGBT, <laughs> right? ChatGBT. And, and it's I, I, I'm very open that I use it every day. It's like an assistant to me, right? It's like a partner to what <laughs> I do. It's literally built out my daily routine, my daily plans for me, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, that's one way that if you're a small business or mm -hmm. even a solopreneur like you and I are, right? you know, I've utilized ChatGBT to be that guide for me, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's very, very creepy what it can do. Creepy. And, very <laughs> creepy. I was uh, having a conversation with one of my clients and he was like, uh, uh, he was like, yeah, um, Hold on a minute, so I can uh, consult my secretary. <laughs> and he starts chapping in the chat GPT, and I say, "You are you serious right mm -hmm, now?" And mm -hmm. it's but it's funny because the same thing I was telling him, Chat GPT said the same thing. He was like, "Oh well, my assistant agrees with you." I was yeah. like, huh. "Okay," but that seems to be the way for the future now. Yeah, and we're going to get into a break in about a minute. But when Jamar and I come back, we're going to give you guys an insight of, of a few. Uh, discussions we had, you know, and we're going to like hypothetically go through a few things. And we're going to discuss as Jamar is the integrator, you know, being the, you know, the, the finances guy and me as the visionary being more of the, the guy that comes up with the ideas and how we think we can help, you know, every small business out there, every solopreneur out there. So if you have any questions or you want us to discuss where you're at with your business, Feel free to give us a call, 520-790-2040. It's 
520-790-2040, and we will answer every and all of your questions from both the CFO and the CMO perspective. We are back with the Marketing Corner. Jamar and I are also members of the Blue Blazers, and this Thursday is the kickoff luncheon, right? It's at the Western La Paloma? Yes, it is. Yeah. If you have any, if you want to attend that, um, I, I, gosh, I forgot the main speaker. Is. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the kickoff luncheon. It, it, it marks about a hundred days before the, the Arizona Bowl, which is going to be huge. Mm-hmm. Jamar and I have served on that uh, volunteer committee for the last three, four years now. Absolutely, yeah, I've yeah, served. This is my second year. Yeah, your second year. I think it's my fourth or fifth year. I think yeah. so. I will be in Denver next week. Unfortunately, I'll be back for next uh, week's marketing show. Of course. We got a big guest. I'm going to, you know, reveal the big guest in the next break. Okay. But it's a huge guest. It's going to make up for not having a special guest today. Okay. By far. It's going right. to be huge. It's going to be huge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so before the break, we, we talked a little bit about what Jamar and I kind of like began discussions about how we could help small business owners, solopreneurs, um, from a CFO, CMO perspective as a fractional piece, right? Right. Meaning you're not hiring somebody full time to do that piece but you know someone that's dedicated and an expert in each one of our areas you and I make up the perfect combination here right you know if, if you follow anything about you know an integrators and visionaries that's a perfect combination to lead a business right right so from an integrator perspective you want to talk a little bit about your piece and what you would bring to the table for a small business who doesn't have that you know anybody who fills that role well you know um first of all i would like to say that if you're not using social media by now you've already missed the boat Mm -hmm. so uh if you don't then you need to contact sean immediately (laughs) because i'm telling you that uh there's only so many hours in the day and you have to do social media pretty much every day to uh keep up with the trends of what's going on right now in the business world but uh, yeah. as far as myself goes, uh, I failed to mention that I'm, I do taxes and finances, but I'm also an enrolled agent, so I'm mm-hmm. licensed to practice for the IRS. So I represent a lot of clients that uh, have some tax problems. I help you open up those envelopes you don't want to open up. <laughs> <laughs> That's mainly what I do. I sit at the table with you, like, okay, let's open those let's envelopes do this together. Let's do it together. <laughs> Boom, bye, yeah. <laughs> but uh, as far as what I bring to a uh, small business, I just make you look at your finances from uh, a different point. Mm-hmm. And the point is, is that a lot of times when, when you're a sole entrepreneur, when you are, I call it a one man show, mm-hmm. that the last thing you forget to do is pay yourself. So basically what you're doing is that you're making money and you it pretty much seems like you're making money to pay bills. And then you was like, well, how come I can't get ahead? Why come I can't scale? And well, then that's when we go back and we look at your your numbers and see what you're doing and uh you know we go and look at your pnl if you don't have one we help you create one because you need a profit and loss statement and we just kind of start from there so i think that's what we do because again i mentioned about the three main components of business sales operations and finances where marketing is a big piece of operations right mm-hmm. so if, if you have that piece and you got the finances now you know you're 75 percent pretty much complete and then that also gives you the ability to uh also, in case you want to make any purchases, I come in with you and I say, okay, you know, you, you know, you want to buy a piece of equipment. Okay, well, you know, how's that going to affect and how long is it going to take to pay that off? And we also look at the return on investment. Hey, is it worth you buying that? And then how much of how much revenue is that going to generate or how much are you going to save? So my philosophy, there's two ways to make money. Either you're making money or you're saving money. In small businesses, a lot of times you don't realize saving money is making money. So that's the part I bring to you. No, that's excellent. I mean, just just hearing that, I mean, how many of us, I mean, including myself a few years ago, never understood any of that concepts. Or it's like, ah, I got this cushion in my account. I'll just roll it <laughs> out. What, what about the budget? I mean, how important mm-hmm. is maintaining or coming up with a budget that makes sense? Oh, yeah. That's, you know, a budget is, is huge because you have to think sometimes as a, you know, a small business, then, you know, now you have to think about retirement, mm-hmm. you know, because you're not working, you know, through corporate America or, you know, you're not working with a company that's giving you a 401k that's, you know, doing matching. So, you know, you pretty much are making your own retirement. Now, the good thing is that there are some retirement 
plans out there for uh, solo entrepreneurs out there. But even before you get to that point, you know, you got to get your numbers straight to make sure you can even, you know, you can even, uh, you know, put money towards those, uh, you know, those retirement vehicles. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, and, and you, you know, you have to, if you treat your business like a business, it will pay you like one. If you treat it like a hobby, mm -hmm. then it's going to pay you like one and you're probably not going to be in business too long. Right. And see where you and I had this discussion before is how we could kind of match up for a small business mm -hmm. where I can come in and be the visionary, be that marketing or specifically the sales or promotions piece, mm -hmm. run it by you to see if it makes sense for that small business owner financially to do so. Mm -hmm. And if it does, we roll with it. But if it doesn't, we find other ways mm -hmm. to make sense both on the, the sales, promotion and marketing piece to keep that small business owner within a budget, to keep her him on track for their future. Right. So, I mean, that's one of the things where every small business owner out there who's, you know, gone by the, the 12 and the 24 month mark and the five year mark, they obviously know what they're doing. Right. Right. But how much better off could they have been and how many less speed bumps along the way if they had somebody who was that integrator? To be kind of like the two little, you know, the angel and the devil on <laughs> oh, your shoulders, shoulders right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, me being the devil, saying, that's a great idea, run, <laughs> no, run with it. The they probably think and, I'm and the devil because I'm like, no, you don't have any money. <laughs> but you being an angel saying, that's a great idea, but we don't got no money to do so. Yeah. You know, so what about loans? I mean, and, and again, we're kind of just kind of spitballing this, yeah. you know, if you guys haven't kind of figured this out. Yeah. But what about loans? I mean, does, do loans make sense? For or it does it just depend? I mean, it, I mean, it de it depends. I think I think the number one thing you do have you got to have operating capital, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so as long as you you have that now, when when, when you first start now, you you know you might need loans. Now I know you got this principle, you know, do it by your bootstraps and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And I agree with mm -hmm. that too. I believe in funding your own business. Mm -hmm. However. You also need a cushion because you just never know what emergencies come up. And mm -hmm. you don't want to say, oh, well, I was told I could start a business for $500. Yeah, but what happens when something happens and mm -hmm. something breaks? Mm -hmm. Now, you, you know, now you're already in the negative. Yeah. So I think that, yeah, you know, loans are important. Not only loans are important, but establishing a relationship with a bank credit union is so important. Mm -hmm. And start building those business lines of credit. Wow, yeah. Yeah. You know, you and I we were kind of discussing specifically, you know, that that lone entrepreneur, the solopreneur. I'm going to bring up a bad word. Don't worry, John, I'm not going to curse, but it's a <laughs> it's a bad word. What about partnerships? <laughs> uh, see, I've been in a couple of partnerships myself. Um, partnerships can, you know, partnerships can be good. Um, I would just say that, you know, I would say vet your partners, though, yeah, right? Yeah. Because what I say is that a lot of times there's a reason why they're trying to bring on a partner. Mm. Now, if they're trying to bring on a partner to scale, you know, that might be different. You, you know, you're trying to merge what you do. Mm -hmm. Hey, I do finances. No, you do this, you do that. Okay, that's fine. But if, if, if they're trying to bring on a partner because they're in trouble, well, you probably want to see why they're in trouble and mm -hmm. then why they're really bringing you on. And then do you want that headache, especially if you're already doing good in the business you're already in? Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, having the, the integrator and the visionary makes sense? You know, two people that are kind of almost opposites would make sense to, to, to forge a good partnership? Oh, absolutely. I, you know, I believe you have to have a... And, and and the thing is, what people don't understand, depending on what business is, mm -hmm. those roles might reverse, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You know, because yeah. you, uh, because my main thing, and I know nobody wants to hear about this, is tracking your progress, right? Mm -hmm. You know, tracking, hey, I'm all for social media, I'm all for branding. Just track it and make sure that, mm -hmm. you know, that the branding, the social media and everything is doing what it's supposed to do. Because you got to have it. There, right. there, there's no right. other way to do it now right. without the old school way of, mm -hmm. you know, newspaper, yellow pages, all that's gone now. So you got to mm -hmm. have social media. Mm -hmm. My thing is, if you don't know how to direct your social media, you need to call Sean. <laughs> but if you don't know how to direct your social I'll, media. I'll give you not two lunches now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, for real, because even me being a... a 
a, a small business owner myself, I really don't have time for social media. Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of times, a lot of businesses don't have it because they're more focused on the operations. As they should be. Right. Yeah. So then social yeah. media and finances get missed. Right. 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 So right. then you said, okay, well, well, how can I do social media if I'm worrying about doing the day-to-day -day operations? Mm -hmm. Well, it, but yeah. that's also an integral point is how you build more, how you, how you, how you start that, that yeah. sales funnel too. Yeah to either maintain your customers or even get more customers. Yeah. So you, you got to have that piece. Yeah, and I'm going to give one of the biggest mistakes that I see you know, small businesses do with their social media, and you're going to follow up with the biggest mistake that you see mm -hmm. they do with their finances. The biggest mistake they do with their social media, they give it to their son or their daughter or their niece who's like, you know, um, a quote-unquote, you know, social media <laughs> whiz or guru that drives me off the wall. It's like they, they don't know any, they don't have any marketing background. They're just, you know, mm -hmm. posting pictures of them and their little chihuahuas, one thing. Mm -hmm. Posting, you know, a, a marketing, you know, a post is right. totally different, right? So that's one of the biggest mistakes I see, you right. know, that small businesses make with their social media. Yeah. One of about 27. <laughs> 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 What's... What's one or two, you know, <laughs> we've got some leave. We've got about a minute and a half here. Right. What are some biggest mistakes that you see small business owners do with their finances? Um, I would say being too cheap, you know, trying to take shortcuts. Interesting. And, and I say that is that, again, you know, if you treat your business, and I'm going to keep honing in on it, if you treat your business mm -hmm. like a hobby, it's going to pay you like yeah, a hobby. Yeah. If you treat it like a business, it's going to pay you as a business. Mm -hmm. And what I say that is that, uh, what I say that my number one thing is that, you know, spend the money, just spend the money wisely mm -hmm. and spend it on something that's going to generate revenue yeah. for the company. And yeah. then uh, the second biggest thing I hear is that, you know, QuickBooks can do everything. <laughs> No, it can't. I, I learned that one the hard way, too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. QuickBooks can do everything you do. It can do everything the business needs to do. Mm -hmm. But again, bad data in is bad data out. So just yeah. remember that. As we get into this last uh, bottom of the hour, I want to get back to that point you made about being too cheap. We're going to um, bring up that discussion. Absolutely. You're listening to the Marketing Corner. We are back with the marketing corner. We're going to pick up a discussion that we had talked about, you know, um, entering last break was you said something very, um, that, that caught my attention. You said one of the biggest mistakes that small business owners make is that they're too cheap sometimes. I so, agree. Um, did, do you have, obviously not, uh, <laughs> calling anybody out but you know I, I see that with somebody that I know mm -hmm. and it's funny because being too cheap really just kind of it, it, it's horrible for the morale right you know I think it's one of the byproducts of being too cheap right you know it's horrible for morale for the other partners and the employees and it just trickles on down you know is there you know uh, any way you could set that standard to where you avoid being that quote unquote cheap boss well I mean you know you have to uh, part of that you know you have to value your company mm -hmm. right and then two you have to see where where you're trying to take your company mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and then you know um, a lot of times you know for you know for the the top notch people mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's it's going to cost you money, but not only will you cost you money, but that top-notch consultant or that yeah. top-notch marketer yeah. has also a network. So now you're tapping into that network too. Yeah. So I tell, you know, my clientele like, "Okay, so, you know, you're you're going to this retreat or you're going this or whatever." I say, "Okay, that's fine, but mm -hmm. you should have an idea and agenda as you go in there. Hey, I'm looking to establish you know, relationships uh, with, with other mm -hmm. business owners like myself, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to tap into that network yeah. with that consultant. Yeah. So I would say that would be worth the money yeah. to do that because now that's going to establish open funnels for you to, again, establish some partnerships exactly. and even, you know, yeah. do work with like minded people. Yeah. And to that point, uh, next week, Monday through third, Monday through Friday, actually, I'll be in Denver for a trade show. Okay. And the, uh, the, people that I'm representing uh, at this trade show, they put in about 20 grand into this trade show for their booth and their tower and all this stuff. Oh, yeah, and, absolutely. You know, and that's the way to do it, right? Yes. Because if, if you go in and you buy a little 
section at a trade show and you've spent mm-hmm. you know 150 bucks for mm-hmm. a table and some chairs right people are gonna walk right by you so you want to establish that brand identity find that area where mm-hmm. you know and budget was a major concern you know we, they've been planning this since the beginning of the year mm-hmm. right so along the way they budgeted it out they knew they had to make you know drop um, a pretty penny to be there and have right. this presence mm-hmm. so you know, you got to think about that too. I mean, your presence. You know, how, how do you appear when you walk into a, a networking event and your polo is, you know, uh, a four dollar polo that you got <laughs> imported from? You know what I mean? So, Jamari, I think you and I, from the people <laughs> that we know, polo. <laughs> yeah, you've you've seen it. You can't tell me you haven't seen it. Hey. Where you've you've you know met somebody and they're wearing a. A t-shirt with a logo on it that looks like you know they <laughs> yes, yes <laughs> you know yeah, you, it, it, it's a horrible first impression right? yes yes you and i are probably the hardest working people that we know yeah you love your work right too much probably too much do, <laughs> do you think that you and i are both maybe a little bit out of balance out of that work life balance um yeah, I guess for me, it's just... Uh, we're, we're being vulnerable right now. Yeah, we're being vulnerable. <laughs> I, I, think, I think my thing is, and I hear this from not only my friends, mm-hmm. but colleagues, mm-hmm. is that, you know, you got to be able to turn it off. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, is that, you know, well, once you get into that problem, when you get in that problem-solving mindset, mm-hmm. then, you know, I can get up at 1 o'clock in the morning and be like, oh, yeah. I figured yeah. it out, yeah. you know? So yeah. I would say you need, you need to be able to turn it off sometime at night. Are you saying that just to be kind of PC, or are you saying that? <laughs> no, I'm being for real. Like, yes, if you know my friends and you talk to them, they're yeah. like, oh, he worked too much. Yeah, but, but at the same time, I mean, do, do you want to work less and not enjoy, you know? Because you and I, as, you know, business owners, you know, we get that freedom to do mm-hmm. what we want. Right. You and I love to work. Yes. I'd rather work than do almost anything else. True. But, you know, I do have my times where I, quote, unquote, turn it off. Oh, yeah. But, you know, I get to do this. I love what I do. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm the last person. Uh, I admit this 100%. I'm the last person to talk about work-life balance. Oh, man. You know, I, I'm sorry, but I am. We have an opportunity here in this country to go after what we want to do. Mm-hmm. And all I got to think about is the time where my dad was stationed at Clark Air Base being right. in the Philippines. Right. And, <laughs> and just seeing how much the people there, they don't have, and they still don't have you know much to live on right 20 30 years later right. so we're going to be getting into our last break here this was a quick one we'll be back yeah. in a few minutes this is the marketing corner yeah. we were back in the last segment of the marketing corner tomorrow this hour goes by fast real quick <laughs> as we get into the last segment as I always do i want to thank john our engineer for helping us out today uh the, the sponsors david bradley medicare a to z candace eaton c in photography of course, the man in the studio with me today, Jamar Jordan, uh, LaFay Processing, Last Bridge Media, my buddy Danny McPadden, and Mark Wise, Sales Performance Strategies. Are you ready for the announcement from next week's guest? Absolutely. Mr. Edmund Marcus. Oh. Edmund Marcus. Okay. If you've been in Tucson for a minute, Edmund is... <laughs> that yeah. next week's going to be phenomenal. That name sounds familiar. Edmund Marcus, yeah. He, he's a... Uh, I've known him for 25, 30 years, and uh, we're going to talk next week about he how he disrupted disrupted his industry before the word disrupted in industry was okay. e- even thrown around. Nice. Yeah. Nice. yeah. So make sure you listen to mm-hmm. that next week, and uh, it, it's going to be fast and furious. I'm excited to hear that, about that. That dude has a ton of, he's a walking energy drink. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's always been that way. So yeah. his uh, son is actually one of the interns for the Blue Bladers. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, okay. the, the guy that was uh, in the, uh, on the athletic team, I think the track and field. Okay. The U of A. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah, that's his son. Okay. Yeah, so be sure to tune in and make sure you have your questions ready. If you have any questions for Jamar and I, this last uh, section, it's uh, 520-790-2040. And uh, we're talking about our work ethics and maybe <laughs> what we'd want to prescribe to everybody. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't I don't apologize for it. I don't apologize for it. Gary V works 60, 80 hours a week. Yeah. That's all I got to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, 
and, and, and he's he's a, a major force. He's an influence, right? So, he's got to crush it. Yeah, and all I want to do is crush it here in Tucson absolutely. first. Then move to Phoenix and then kind of... Oh, you know, absolutely. Move from there. You and I were talking a little bit about how I um, track... Because you had a, a question here um, during one of our breaks. is How do I track what we do for a client on social media? Yes. There is an overabundance of data when it comes to not just the organic or that day-to-day posts which should have a strategy, right? Mm-hmm. But with our ads as well. Okay. You know, so if you reverse engineer what you want to accomplish, right? Mm-hmm. You know, say you want more leads, say you want more um, appointments, you want you want more of your widgets bought online, there's absolutely a way that we could track not only the cost per click and how much it's costing, but the conversion rates on those. But more importantly, and we've all been there, we've all seen it, if you and I are talking about something and our settings aren't set correctly on our phones, you will see one of my ads pop up. Oh, you know, wow. so um, um, we could retarget. We could look to the look like audiences. We could do a ton of things for that um, trade show that we're going to next week. I was able to get a copy of the twenty seven hundred participants. Oh. I downloaded, or I should say I uploaded them to Meta, the Facebook, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, business ads manager. And I'm running ads to every one of those 2,700 participants to come by my booth. (laughs) 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 They, and this is coast to coast, you know, there's 2,700 people from coast to coast. As long as their emails are Mm -hmm. associated with some, uh, a Facebook, you know, profile. Mm Mm-hmm. And sure enough, I mean, after literally the first day we started running ads, uh, we had reached close to 15, 1,600 people. Wow. So a very high percentage of those 2,700 emails have already been hit. People are going to know me or know our booth, know our product before they even, you know. That's awesome. (laughs) So, yeah, we can get super creepy, you know, with with our, our, but, but it makes sense. And to what we can do then is give you that data. And you're going to be like, yes, this makes sense. Or it doesn't, right? Right. Well, at least we have a data behind it. We're not just kind of saying, yeah, I think it's kind of working. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. Yeah. And I would say one thing in business, you know, you have to be willing to take chances also. That's huge. You know, that's huge. I think yeah. every successful business owner, they have a few things in common, right? Mm-hmm. One of the things is they're they're fair. You right. Know, one of the things is that they're not greedy. But they also have that balance to where they're willing to... They have risk. They got risk, yeah. They got risk. Um, when you started working for yourself out out of the military, I mean, what was that? How daunting was that for you to go from, you know, being a part of the military to working for yourself? Well, you know, uh, just the whole difference of coming from the military mm-hmm. and coming out to the civilian sector was a total shock. I mm-hmm. thought a lot of... Yeah. I thought a lot of the the populace did the same thing the military did, <laughs> you know, you know, yeah. you know, yeah. customs and values and stuff like no. that. You know, no. integrity. You know, no. those those important no. things in life, right? Yeah. And you and then uh, you get there, you're like, oh, this is uh, yeah. <laughs> this is totally different. Yeah. So uh, I knew then. Well, I was I knew then I wanted to work for myself after I retired anyway, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I did uh, you know network marketing and while I was in the military. So it really mm-hmm. wasn't that big of a transition. I think the biggest transition was I thought that uh, I, I, I thought that everybody you know I thought that a lot of the populace kind of you know thought the same when mm-hmm. it came down to uh, you know, how you run businesses and you know, how you yeah. treat clients and everything and. Yeah. Yeah, even as a, even as a military awakened. brat, there's a huge difference between growing up amongst other military brats and versus right. the regular kind of civilians. There's a huge difference. You know, that first year, year and a half, you know, I graduated from high school in Germany. I told you this. Right, right. And most of my time before 18 was overseas. Okay. Coming back to the States was a shock. It was huge. I, 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 didn't, I didn't have any friends the first year I was here. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I did. It was a culture shock being here in yes. Tucson. I, I just, you know, but but you're right. I mean, some of those values, you know, integrity, you know, um, mm-hmm. you, you know, you know, always being early. Uh, oh, oh my God! <laughs> Punctuality is a huge punctuality. Yeah, you know, but, uh, no. Because you just never know, you know, the military, you know, it's like if you're 15, you know, if you're not 15 minutes early, you're late. You're late. 
because yeah. you just never know yeah. and that's just to give you that buffer right and then it also gives you a chance to when you get there you know uh maybe there's last minute things you need to do paperwork mm -hmm. or whatever so yeah. you got that 15 minutes there yeah I'm like okay i'm okay yeah and then you know the things that you know your appearance what you wear you know how, how you treat everybody definitely you know i mean i think all those things that i think i knew when you when I first met you, I knew right away you probably had a military background. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's just the way you present yourself, right? Right. Um, but you know how you instill and keep those values into what you do. I mean, it's it's glaring. I think it's what separates you from the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So again, if you have any questions for Jamar, or I Jamar or I. Mm -hmm. It's uh, 520-790-2040. We're here in the last segment of the marketing corner. So getting back to, you know, th what what are some of the things that, you know, when you see yourself that may you've maybe you've overworked yourself a little bit? Mm -hmm. You know, what are some of the signs that you can tell and what do you do? Uh, the biggest thing is rest. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know, you're, because if you don't, eventually you know, your body's going to shut you down. Right. So, and then, you know, when I'm not, and, and you know, you can tell when, when, when you're thinking clearly, mm -hmm. and then when, when some things are just not, when you're off, like, okay, I probably need to shut it down a mm -hmm. little bit. But th those kind of, those are my tall tale signs, yeah. you know, uh, aside from, you know, driving home, falling asleep, <laughs> and, not, and not being drunk. So, I would say, yeah, that gets kind of scary sometimes, but... Uh, you know, um, I would say, you know, work ethic is very important. Mm -hmm. Just don't overwork yourself. Yeah. My biggest sign is when I go home and I, 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 I fall asleep on the couch and I wake up like 12, 13 hours later in my clothes <laughs> <laughs> with like that drool all over my oh, face. Yeah. That's the sign that I've overdid it. Like I'm still here in the same <laughs> spot. <laughs> My TV's shut down and everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I tend to do that a few times a year, to be honest. Yeah. You know, and, and that's when I got to take a day off, got to go walk around a little bit, you know, kind of mm -hmm. get back on a better diet for at least a week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and by the way, exercise is important. When you're a solopreneur, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you have to get out there and exercise, take care of your body. Mm -hmm. That's so important because, again, if, if, if you're not there, then the business don't run. Mm -hmm. so, how important is your network? Your network of people that you, you know, you collaborate with, that you, your clients, you know, the, the people in your, in your pipeline. Oh, definitely. Your network determines your net worth. Mm -hmm. Let me repeat that because it's a, I know people say it's a cliche, but your network really determines mm -hmm. your net worth. Uh, we, you know, we were talking offline about, you know, spending money for consultants and mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people spending money for the consultants, but it's also to meet like-minded people, but it's also to tap into that consultant's network. So right. now you got right. access to his network, too. Mm -hmm. So the more networks you can have access to, mm -hmm. then the better that's going to help you long run because, the, because now you have problem solvers in different networks that you may need. You may need somebody on the legal side. You may yeah. need somebody, you know, uh, uh, that's part of uh, the financial side. Mm -hmm. Then you may need somebody on the marketing side or mm -hmm. even operations. So the mm -hmm. more networks you can tap into, the better. And again, most of those networks have strong values of like-minded people who believe yeah. in work ethic too. Yeah, one of the the tendencies or, or the traps, of, you know, of maybe joining some of those upper echelon type of networking groups mm -hmm. is just wanting to try to be one of those people right don't do that to be one of those people though. right you know do that because you're getting some value and like what you just said right now mm -hmm. people that are like-minded that are really gonna like take an interest in you and how they could help you grow your business right you know because i think i've seen a few times where people are joining more of the higher level mm -hmm. higher end mm -hmm. groups here just so they could say that this so-and-so is my "Quote unquote buddy." Yeah, he's not your buddy. He don't care about you. He don't care about you. <laughs> and, and and you know, one thing I would tell you is that, and I tell even my clientele, mm -hmm. surround yourself around like-minded people who want to see you successful, and then you want to see them successful. Mm -hmm. It makes a major difference. Major difference. But yeah. I tell you what, well, once you start getting these upper echelon people that you want to hang around with, they mean business. Mm -hmm. So if you're not 
<laughs> you know, so if, if you're not trying to get to that level, oh, yeah, they will not talk to you because they right. was like, hey, you know, you're yeah. at this level right now. You know, I thought you were trying to do something. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, you need a reality check to tell you like, oh, mm -hmm. OK, you know, I do need to do some things yeah. different. What are some of the biggest lessons you've learned, both good and bad, <clears throat> you know, since you've been working for yourself for how long now? Well, one about nine years. Nine now. years. So yeah. biggest lesson you can give the audience, both good and bad. Uh, the biggest lesson, mm -hmm. you can't do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. And I repeat that. You can't do it by yourself and get you a strong team. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I'm working on now, building my own team. Mm -hmm. You partner up with Sean, you know, taking some of that load off of me. You know, it's it's not just about making money, you know, because you can make money to survive. But can you make money and can you scale it? Mm hmm and I think that's the that's one of the biggest things I learned. One one of the great takeaways is that you know you have the freedom, you know, to take risk, mm -hmm. and uh, you don't have to answer to anybody when you own your own business. Can can risk be budgeted? Does that make sense? Can can you budget a certain amount every year? Yeah, that you're gonna absolutely. You, know, you that's, can that's set aside from your marketing and everything else. Oh yeah, you yeah. can you can. Uh, you can have different pots of money for everything. Okay. Um, you know, you can have five different accounts. There's uh, mm -hmm. a thing called Profit First out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not plugging it, not telling you, but there's mm -hmm. a book called Profit First. It helped me uh, understand a lot. Uh, <clears throat> you know, so yeah, so you can budget anything. It's just it's all numbers. Mm -hmm. But the but thing is, what I tell people, have a plan when that revenue comes in, whether mm -hmm. you right, believe in the right. Dave Ramsey concept of baby steps, mm -hmm. you know, but have a plan when that revenue comes in. And mm -hmm. I think as you do that, then you can budget for anything. Yeah. What are some of your biggest goals for 2025? My biggest goal for 2025 is to have my team established. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, really hone in on my social media. That's where Sean comes in, Boom. CMG. <laughs> um, and and then and then and then continue to expand my network also. Mm -hmm. And then for the for the callers here, the people that are listening, call into the marketing corner because this information is crucial to your business development. Also, there's local resources out here. Uh, like Rick Loveland over at the SBDC, if mm -hmm. you haven't heard mm -hmm. of him, mm -hmm. you know, Google SBDC, Rick Loveland. These are free programs out there that are nonprofits that that help out, they're the geared to help out small businesses. So not only do you have the marketing corner, you have free resources from the government also mm -hmm. that can help you out. Utilize those resources. Call into the show, ask questions. Yeah. You know that you know that's what the show is here for. Exactly, and, and you know we are very transparent. I mean, I think just this last hour we've right. shown that you know we yeah, we fall on our face. These oh, are absolutely. some of the things that we do not so well. We know that, mm -hmm. and these are some of the areas where we've kind of you know mm -hmm. done okay with. So yeah. another resource uh, every second Tuesday. Um, at the Sands Club, we do the hot seat. Absolutely. Yeah, where Absolutely. we do, we put two experts, you know, um, up front of a group of people. They, they uh, talk a little bit about themselves. But uh, if you show up to the Sands Club and you're interested in what they're talking about, you can ask them anything they want. And that's the only thing we ask from the experts that show up is just to be transparent. Absolutely. Not to be afraid of telling you, not, not how they've just succeeded, but where they've failed as well. Okay. So, yeah. So I think 2025 for you and I, Jamar, is going to be pretty big. I think it's going to be awesome. Yeah. And I think uh, it's going to kickstart here these last few months. Without going on one side or the other, I'm not going to you know, take a side here, but I think the election is going to be impactful for a lot of us, no matter who wins. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just hoping to keep some of my friends because <laughs> I'm telling you. I, I, <laughs> I miss being able to talk politics amongst <laughs> people that, we, you know, it, it's, it's a lost age right now. Uh, one thing know. I would tell you when 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 you become a business owner, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff oh, yeah. changes yeah. when you become a business owner. Yeah, yeah, and that that's one thing. As we get in this last minute, I'm gonna just kind of throw that in. Mm -hmm. I respect everybody's opinion. I really, really do. But mm -hmm. as a small business owner, when you bash the other side, that's true. You're lose potentially losing half of your potential client, or even some of your current clients. Mm -hmm. You can't just assume everybody thinks the way you do. Absolutely. And I've seen that a lot recently. A lot. A lot. And <laughs> it's no kind of like in the gray. Mm -hmm. They are just. 
bashing the other side to a pulp. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> if, you know, and, and you know, a, a lot of times they don't realize oh. these the people that they're bashing yeah. work work right yeah. across the hall from each other. Right. They golf and right. everything like that, but yeah. we yeah. over here bashing. Yeah. Us, we over here bashing other people. Thank you for uh, checking us out. Make sure you catch us next week with uh, Edmund Marquez on the Marketing Corner.